Hello and welcome dear learners, professionals and students to the another very interesting topic that is dissolution testing and surfactants. So in this video, we will discuss and talk about the surfactants. What are surfactants, why they are used and what is the criteria for using the surfactants then the problems associated with the use of surfactants and the best practices for using the surfactants in dissolution testing. Mainly the video will cover the dissolution testing of oral solid formulations. So first of all we need to understand what is sink condition. We know that sink condition is required for performing the dissolution testing and it is very very important to have a sink condition while performing the dissolution. So sink conditions are, can be defined as the volume of fluid needed to fully dissolve three times the targeted amount of the drug substance in the doses form. That means the media should be at least able to dissolve the three doses or three times the quantity of API in the dosage form. The sink condition requirement meets means you can say that the sink conditions requirement is meeting if the volume of dissolution media dissolves the three times the quantity of the drug substance in the formulation. For example, the paracetamol tablets uh, of 500 mg media volume of dissolution should dissolve at least 1500 mg of the paracetamol or above the media volume that dissolve the 1500 mg of paracetamol then it will become the sink condition and we can say that the sink condition are meeting example second these examples i have given to make you understand about the sink conditions so second example or calculation if the volume of dissolution media is three times the volume required to make the saturated solution of the drug substance. So these definitions are available and after seeing or reading these definitions we should be able to make the decision. So example 2 is taken paracetamol solubility in water is around 20 mg per ml. Uh, it is a general figure I have taken for this example. Volume required to dissolve 500 mg will be 25 ml and for 3 doses it will require 75 ml. That's why above 75 ml media volume will meet the sink conditions. See dissolution is a very very vast topic and it is a core area for the formulation R&D and the pharmaceutical field. So sink condition, why sink condition is required? As you meet the sink condition, it avoids the saturation of the dissolution media and thus the dissolution method can be able to check the performance of the formulation. So if uh, you take the dissolution media or media volume which is not able to dissolve the three times of the formulation dose or API dose or label claim of the formulation you will get a lower dissolution always because once the API starts dissolving in the, into the media or once the formulation starts releasing the API into the media its capacity to dissolve the API will be finished after that only the API will be coming into the media but it will not get dissolved and that's why the dissolution saturation will be there media saturation will be there and the drug release cannot be complete and it will always be lower or stagnant or we cannot get dissolution of 100 percent at any time point then sink condition helps to have more robust dissolution method it provides more biological relevance to the dissolution. See if 
sink condition are met the biological relevance is there for the dissolution testing and the dissolution becomes robust when surfactants can be used in the dissolution media or when there is a need to use the surfactants see surfactants are mainly used to meet the sink condition so it is obvious that when the drug has low solubility or solubility constraints or it is water insoluble that time surfactant can be used but this is not the always case as the other ph or other media volumes can be used to have that solubility so the basic importance of the surfactant is when the drug is insoluble across the ph that means it is insoluble at all the ph range or at all physiological ph range that time other solutions cannot work like increasing the volume or increasing the rpm of the dissolution apparatus that time surfactant play their role when the drug is insoluble or it is insoluble in all the medias which are biologically relevant or if the drug is soluble in non biological media that means if you use alcoholic media that time drug gets solubilized but it is not possible or it is not always justifiable to use the hydroalcoholic media that time surfactant can be used and multiple surfactant needs to be evaluated then surfactant is required to maintain the sink condition whenever there is a requirement of sink condition and sink condition is required to be maintained means during the dissolution run sometime solubility get decreased that time surfactants can be used and their use is justifiable so how this surfactants work mainly surfactants act by having wetting activity the surface active agents surfactants are used as wetting agents for hydrophobic drugs and they increase solubility of the low soluble drugs by decreasing the surface tension and increasing the wetting of the drugs so this is the main mechanism of the surfactants and mainly surfactants increase the solubility of the hydrophobic drugs so surfactant can be used to achieve sink condition for low soluble drugs but the specific surfactant and its level needs to be evaluated and the surfactant level and the surfactant type or the surfactant chemistry may depend on the formulation or drug or other factors surfactant may also have adverse effect like interaction with the media or they may interact with the formulation component or higher level of the surfactant in the media may lead to the inadequate discrimination that means the media with more surfactant will not give you specific discrimination then factors to be consider for surfactant selection now what are the factors or key areas that are to be taken into consideration while selecting the surfactant for the dissolution test now we have to check the surfactant their chemistry that is charge on the surfactant whether it is anionic whether it is cationic or it is having a uh, zwitter ionic chemistry that chemistry is to be taken into consideration then cmc is the very very important point to consider surfactants have critical micelle concentration that means the concentration above which the surfactant from micelles and they increase the solubility of the other material or for this dissolution topic it is drug so the concentration above cmc is to be used then the lowest concentration to be used 
see surfactant increase the solubility of the api or are used to maintain the sink condition so any level cannot be used the lowest possible concentration required to be used then justification of the concentration whatever the surfactant is selected its chemistry its selection criteria its justification is required to be given and also the justification for its concentration or level used that is required to be given and it is must for the regulatory authorities then we have to consider the critical material attributes of the surfactants see sometime the critical material attributes of the surfactants are not evaluated fully and that's why many times the some of the batches pass the dissolution while some of the batches fail why because the surfactant has a very critical role on the solubility and its impact is due to the critical material attribute so this critical material attribute is nothing but it is a it is a material attribute or it is a quality attribute of the material we can say which impacts its performance for sls sodium lauryl sulfate it might be sodium content it might be moisture content or it might be anything which is mentioned in the coa so that ranges are required to be studied critically then any possible interaction with media drug ph or enzyme is to be evaluated or studied many times the enzymes interact with the sls and many times the drugs interact with the surfactant then some surfactant are active or can be used at some specific ph so these things becomes very very important while selecting the surfactant now coming to the best practices the level of surfactant needs justification in detail the lot to lot and vendor to vendor and day to day media variability if you prepare a media with one lot of surfactant and you compare with the other lot it will be vary then vendor to vendor variability or grade to grade variability suppose you take a sls of vendor a and you replace to vendor b then your dissolution will get hampered then day to day media variability these are the problems or if you want to convert it to the best practices then we have to control these points like lot to lot then vendor to vendor and day to day variability then foaming problem and degassing problems are the main issues then sampling challenges are there so we have to develop the best practices for these problems then impurity formation and interaction with the media interaction with the enzyme or formulation component so these are the very very important points now if the surfactant is used above the higher level it will lead to under discrimination of the drug release that means at that concentration level all the formulation batches will pass and there will not be any discrimination or bio relevance so the, here are some common examples like sodium lauryl sulfate is there here the type is anionic and the drugs for which this surfactant is used in the dissolution medium then ctap is there twin 20 is there twin 80 and many more are the examples and based on these examples their type the api list is given in which these surfactants are used now dissolution is the most important topic for any interview whenever we go for the interview that time you will get the question on dissolution so it is very important to study this topic in detail so like share and subscribe to the pharma learning channel to get understanding
of the topics in detail and in depth. These videos will also help you to crack the interviews in the pharma field. For this video, I have referred product labels. I have studied the PILs. I have studied the dissolution medias from USP and Orange Book and OGD media. So thank you for watching this video. And you watched the video series for the best interview preparation. Thank you.